Welcome to TwoQuestions.tv. With me today is Mark Sanborn, and we're talking about realizing your potential. Welcome to TwoQuestions.tv. I'm Susan Barancinimo. With me today is Mark Sanborn. Mark is the president of Sanborn and Associates, an ideal lab for leadership development. In addition to his experience leading at a local and national level, he's written or co-authored eight books, and he's the author of more than two dozen videos and audio training programs on leadership, change, teamwork, and customer service. And he's the author of this book, The Potential Principle, which we're talking about today. Hi, Mark. Thanks for being on the show. Hi, my next book is going to be called Three Questions. <laughs> Wait, it's what? It's better than two questions. Oh, you're, woo, yes, that's confidence. All right. <laughs> just being silly. You have nice to be with you. Thank you. I'm prepared to answer at least two questions. At least two. Maybe we'll have a bonus. I don't know. Occasionally, I've been known to go rogue. All right, so your book is very much themed around the potential idea, the concept of always be a work in progress, but, but really focused around real true improvement. And one thing I haven't seen before is your potential matrix. Can you talk about that a little bit so our audience kind of gets an idea and wants to go learn more? Sure, well, the book really looks at three things. Why get better, where to get better, and how to get better. And the potential matrix is about where to get better. And it really comes out of my work for many years, 30 years in corporate America, and then uh, a few years of working uh, with ministries and faith leaders and paraministries. And to kind of oversimplify and paint with a broad brushstroke, what I found is, is that people in business did very well in the outer world of doing, you know, uh, you know delegating, managing, leading, supervising, communicating, all those things that we're so familiar with but that if they were ever to bump up against this kind of existential question of why, you know, why have I done this? Why have I worked so hard? That the inner world was often little, a little, if not a lot less developed. Mm -hmm. To generalize, uh, when I worked with uh, spiritual leaders and people who ran nonprofits, I found that they by and large had a very uh, well developed and defined inner life. And if I wanted to help them, I would move them into the outer world of doing. And if I wanted to help my, my leader clients, I would move them into the inner world of being. So that's where I came up with first this idea of outer world, inner world. You know, the outer world is what we see, the inner world is who we are and what we think. Then I looked at uh, another dimension, and that is what I call responding or initiating. And when you initiate, you put forth effort to do something. When you respond, certainly there's some effort required, but more or less, you are acting upon an idea or a lesson that has come to you that's been presented by a teacher or an author or that you've uh, come up with as you've thought deeply about things. So when you combine the, uh, the vertical axis, uh, which is uh, responding and initiating, and the horizontal axis, which is inner world and outer world, you come up with four quadrants. And that is the potential matrix. And in the upper right-hand quadrant of the outer world of uh, doing is what I call performing. It's where we spend most of our days. It's where we get evaluated. It's where we make the sale. It's where we are observed and considered for a promotion. But then the outer world of responding is what I call the learning quadrant. Because even though learning takes effort, obviously you have to have something to learn. Uh, the idea, the lesson, the book, the seminar is uh, presented to you and then you're receptive to to taking from that. If you go in the inner world of, of initiating, you have uh, thinking, and that's where we plan and we, uh, we think about what we're gonna do and how we're gonna do it. And then in the lower left-hand corner, the inner world of responding, I call the reflecting quadrant. And that's where you get an idea or an epiphany. Sometimes it's in a shower when you have an idea, it just comes to you, you weren't actively seeking it. But more often than not, it's the result of pursuing some meditative or reflective time. So there's two big ideas to the potential matrix. The first is that we all have a preferred quadrant. And as I've worked with audiences, my initial hunch was that business audiences mostly like the performing uh, uh, quadrant, but I, I was wrong. I find that it's fairly evenly distributed that people uh, kind of fall into you know, their preference of, of each of the four quadrants. And so the big message is if you wanna get better is not to overuse the strength. You know, Don't just stick with what you like to do, 
but you can leverage whatever quadrant you prefer by learning to spend time in the other three quadrants. And that's the first thing is, you know, a strength overuse becomes a liability. So I want people to realize that there's more than one quadrant where they should think about getting better. Then the second part of that is, is that each of the quadrants leverages the other. In other words, if you've got a big performance coming up, you might want to think about what you need to do and learn to get ready, move into the learning quadrant to develop that skill set, then actually perform, and then later reflect on what could have gone better. So as you use those four quadrants, you'll find that they amplify and leverage the results that you get in each of the other. So that's what the potential matrix is. It's a way to look at four areas where you can and should get better. And by getting better in each of those areas, you will uh, find that you have a great deal of leverage in your overall improvement. Very interesting. I'm surprised. I mean, I, I, I'm surprised that it, I, I like you, I, I had a certain expectation about where people would fall in that matrix. And so very interesting. So, okay. Say someone's watching the show today and they're stuck. They feel like they can't move forward. There's nowhere that they can improve. They don't really know what they're doing with their life. How can they get unstuck? How can they close the gap between here and fulfilling that potential? Well, I'm going to borrow some ideas, not necessarily in the potential principle that I think would help answer that question. And the first is, I would say that hope is having something new to try and being willing to try it. You know, hope is not just an attitude or an expectation. You know, that's false hope. Because, uh, you know, if you just sit in your chair and expect the best, you will likely be disappointed. So what I would suggest for people is to identify, you know, I think one of the reasons we often don't start is we have too many places where we could start. Mm -hmm. So I would suggest you ask yourself, you know, if I did, if I was able to successfully do one thing to get unstuck, you know, what would that one thing be? Now, there's lots of things you could do and probably eventually will have to do, but, but pick the low-hanging fruit. Find that one really core thing that if you were able to do it, it would get you unstuck. And then look for um, some ways uh, of how to do it. You know, I say in the book, um, think who before how. That is to say, whatever you were trying to learn to do, somebody else has already successfully done. Right. So, you know, I mean, this is a simple explanation, but my, my snow removal guy here in, in Denver is not going to be doing snow removal this winter. And no. I mean, yeah, I know I've got to replace him. <laughs> I travel so much. I don't have anything in snow removal, but you get to a certain age where you'd much rather rent the behavior than do it yourself. And so I was starting the, uh, you know, the online search, snow removal in the area I live in Denver. And then I realized, wait a minute, my neighbor used the same snow removal guy. My neighbor's really good at finding good vendors. So I texted him and I said, hey, Ron, who are you using this winter? And what, what you find is you save a lot of time when you share ideas with other people who have already solved or are working on solving similar problems. So figure out where you need to get unstuck and then find out what you will do from research and, and study of others, and then pick a time and do it. You know, I, I have a blog in the queue that's called The Cure for Everything. Uh, my, mom, my mom used to uh, say, you know, uh, this will cure what ails you. And, and so I started thinking about, you know, that applied to a thousand things, right, from medicine yeah. to advice. But I started thinking about what, what is the one thing that will always cure what ails you, and that is taking action. You know, any action is better than no action. Uh, people say all the time, I don't have time to exercise. Well, do 10 push-ups, you know, by your desk uh, during the day. That's better than doing no push-ups. You know, don't spend an hour in the gym. The odds of that, uh, if you can, fine. But the odds of you spending an hour in the gym when you've not spent any time in the gym, those are pretty low odds. So find something and do it. And when you start that, that virtuous cycle of identifying what to do and doing it, you'll find that you'll soon become unstuck. Awesome, excellent advice. There you go, viewers, you can get unstuck now. All right, Mark, thank you so much for joining me. This has been lovely. No, no bonus question, ah, oh, No, I didn't. Go rogue, I thought you were gonna well, go off I the was, rails today. Ah, uh, you know, it has, to, it has to come to me and it didn't come to me today. I'm the sorry, you'll have, to, you'll have to come back in the spring and we will see if a bonus question emerges then. All right, we'll do two more questions then. All right, and perhaps a bonus. All right. All right. <laughs> All My right. pleasure. Viewers, this is the book.
the potential principle. Make sure you get this. We're going to have a link to Amazon where you can find this book in the show notes for today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Thank you.